Good morning, everybody. It's March 1st. It's minus 25 degrees Celsius. I just walked about a half a mile because uh, the road's all blocked in way, way over there. March 11th, we got a pretty good snowstorm down here at the South Farm. Brian's in his 9.30 with his blower. It's still quite windy and it's still quite snowy, that's the reason why you can't see nothing. There's about zero visibility in places still. Good morning everybody. It is April 1st today. It is a balmy 7 degrees. The sun is high and feeling warm and no this is not an April's Fool's joke. It is melting. So the drills have been drug out of the snowbank down there. Thank goodness. Because that is basically going to be a slew when all this snow melts. Drug those drills out and we stuck them up here on the terra firma because <laughs> we actually want to be able to work on these drills pretty soon. It is April after all, and uh, I know it doesn't look like spring is here, but to us, spring should be here. Good evening, everyone. It is around 6 p.m. on April 15th. So we're not even running to full capacity here yet, to be honest. So anyways, that's basically our main run. We get excited when we see water run. We haven't seen it run in a long time, so bear with us. It's kind of a new thing to us. Good afternoon, everybody. It's April 17th, and Brian and I, we're gonna change these bushings. These. It goes down into here, right in there, because clearly you can see that it, the other one is gone, and it's just been steel on steel in there, which isn't too good for anything. Good afternoon everybody, it's April 25th today. We are treating seed. Typically we treat our own seed, but this year we are uh, getting it custom done. Can I take a peek in there, sir? Yeah, go ahead. I'll just step up on here. I just want to show the peeps. There's your drum. So it's coming in over there. It gets mixed up in here. Offloads into here and out into the truck it goes. It's kind of satisfied in the watch, kind of like watching a campfire. I'll let him put all that back together. Here's your pumps and set up. Three pumps. Everything is run off an iPad on this thing, I do believe, which is pretty cool. Then we just keep putting our chemical on. There, we'll just step up over here. We won't touch anything. So here's our water, and we're only using two products, so I guess one just has water sitting in it. And here's our chemical, it's like a little paint mixer in there, it's keeping everything fluid, no chunkies. Sorry about the wind guys, but we are in southwest Saskatchewan. Okay.
What do you think, Chapel? Vroom vroom. Vroom vroom, that's a wheel. You got your little tractor, Chapel? You got your little tractor, you gonna show dad? Oh, you wanna show dad another wheel? Fascinated with wheels. Where's your tractor? Huh? Where's your tractor? We got big tractors lining up. Are we almost ready to go seeding? You gonna get take your little tractor seeding? Best looking farmer here. <laughs> so yeah, we are lining up. We got drills coming. We're rolling out in 20 minutes. It's May 3rd today. And the drills are rolling out of the yard. And we're just pulling into the field here. A little ways and we're gonna wing down. Okay. About wing down. Beauty. Here comes Brian. We're just checking our depth here. Also, if you were to see wheat kernels right here, that's a true tail sign that you got blowback, which is your fan speed's too fast. So you don't want to see any kernels. You want them under the ground. They're not gonna grow on top of the ground. No, no, there it is. Just about to give up there for a second. There he is. See him? Perfect. Gonna, oh, there, I dug another one up here. Stick him in there. Pack him in there really good there. You grow, little guy. You grow big and strong. Beauty. Looking good. Good afternoon, everybody. It's May 12th, I think, today, and uh, we're up at the North Farm. Lee is up here with me. I think that we got one other guy coming, a new hire that we just hired. Hopefully, he shows up. Um, yeah, we're right off the highway. But anyways. Cattails do not spread well, especially wet cattails. Just FYI. This is just a little something here that I kind of drug up that I need to clean up just a little bit. Let's go find something. Good afternoon, everybody. It is uh, May 13th today, and this is our first day of seeding here up at the North Farm. The guys are going hard down the south one. Um, they're probably about a week or 10 days into that now. I don't know, maybe they're a little longer than that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Are up our remote. Get Phil. That's not what's supposed to happen. Sometimes these solenoids get a little sticky. Mike just starts pressing the red buttons. Oh. You could actually probably even see this uh, driving all the way along that here. Uh, May 17th. It's the next day. You can still see that there's smoke out there. There's not nearly as much smoke though, so we're pretty thankful for that.
Anyway, you guys know that one of my passions I've been farming is riding on farm equipment. Not only driving it, but riding it. These here are our uh, snorkel kit. Oh, it got windy. Those are our fans. Oh, I gotta book it. This is each individual opener. You don't want to put your fingers in a pin zone. Hold on. These are our mid-row banders. I think next time I'd maybe consider doing the shank. Get mid-row shank. Good afternoon everybody. It is uh, June 1st here today and uh, we are back south and we're gonna go and bug Rickles and maybe do a little drill riding or drill walking, whatever you want to call it here. <laughs> hey, you don't have a you don't have a problem if we ride around with you. Like not with you in the cab, you know, we don't want to encroach in your space, but you might be on the drill on the train, maybe I'll drag underneath the hitch of the tractor for a little while and scoop back up. I might run myself over with that tire right there real quick just to kind of feel what it feels like and then just jump back up on the frame. Well, that's fine. Yeah. That's all good with you? Okay, well, I don't want to get ridden over by the tractor because that would actually hurt a little bit. The drill and the cart, that'd be no big deal, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not bad. So don't mind us. Don't mind us. If, if you see this mid-row bander cut me in half, it's all good. I'll just put myself back together and keep going. It's extra fertilizer. It's extra fertilizer. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, we have an awesome crew. And just like that, we're back. We're going to step off. Thanks, Rickles. Thank you, sir. He's an awesome guy. Anyway, guys, I gotta go and uh, coordinate some sprayers because I think I said already we're crop spraying down here. We got all the sprayers going and seeding at the same time. That is common for us to do, by the way. It's not uncommon. We're just not used to it because it's been so dry for the last few years that we're able to finish seeding and you look at your little spindly crop that's trying to come because it hasn't had any moisture. Now we got lots of moisture. We keep getting these thunderstorms. Crops are looking good. Hey guys, how's it going? It is uh, June 9th today. It's June 9th. You can clearly tell that I'm hooked up to this uh, Dagelman roller and we're in the case 9380 here. 
also you clearly know that we are back up at the North Farm. We finished seeding at the South Farm, as you already would be aware of. Probably about half done crop spraying, I would say. And we sprayed our chickpeas, just finished spraying the chickpeas on our first application. And you have sprayed those chickpeas for fungicide multiple applications throughout the course of the year. But we'll talk about that in another video at another time. You're right, we should probably get some rolling footage. everybody I'm down south here so we're on one of the wheat fields this field has already been sprayed one time with insecticide like only two days ago and uh, it's still there's still uh, one there one there um, there's obviously a lot of chewing going on on these leaves a lot of chewing there's still lots of hoppers out here it's hard for you guys to see because they're so small. Like there's one. Put that in perspective. My finger, oh. We thinned them down, but they're still doing quite a bit of chewing. Obviously these are tracks right here. Look, there's like five right here. Oh, never mind, they jumped. Really hard to see him. See if I can zoom in on this guy. Right there. He's pretty small, but they do a lot of damage. And once they start chewing off your leaves, well, that's obviously really hard on your crop because your crop gets its photosynthesis from its leaves. So we went to a different field here on the way up. You can see him. See him jumping. Definitely a lot more up here, boy. This uh, this is also spring wheat, not nearly as advanced. But they can do a lot of damage on it. Look at these little guys. There you go, right. Right. He's, oh, he's gone. What the heck? These guys are so tiny. They're just little baby grasshoppers. See, they're still doing some damage. Oh, that leaf just fell right off. That's not too good. Anyways, we're gonna have to send the sprayers here next by the look of it. You really can't tell, but there's lots of little baby grasshoppers jumping around while I'm walking here. See, look at the chewing on this stuff, big time. Hmm. There's one right there. Hold on. Right there. Right there. Sorry, but they're hard to spot. They're pretty dang well camouflaged. So, yeah. One more time. Last time, last time. Here we go. Oh, 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 sorry about that, guys. Good afternoon, everybody. It is June 22nd today. I 
apparently it's the first day of summer or second day of summer whatever it is either way all i know is the days are starting to get shorter christmas is coming and that's not very awesome to think about but anyways update down here as you know the south farm was actually quite wet during the seeding application uh, may was very or april may mostly may was pretty dang wet uh, we had quite a few rains come through there was lots of stucks down here and as you know the north farm because i'm currently at the south farm the north farm was actually quite dry seeding didn't have any rain delays had some fog there but uh I had a couple stucks up there, but mostly because it was, you know, I got too close to a slough. Well, now it is June 22nd, a month later, and uh, we're dry. Again, at the South Farm, we're dry. It is the last three to four days haven't been very hot. It's only been like 23, 25, maybe the odd 27. It's been a bit breezy, which probably hasn't helped, but the crops are now have peaked and are going backwards very quickly. So this was this is wheat. This is some of our this is actually one of the very first fields seeded to wheat. As you can tell, it's in the shop blade. It it is pushing ahead right here. See the beards of that wheat? It's just coming out. Oops, sorry, right there. That uh, wheat head is actually right here in the boot. It's literally just pushing out right now. You, you see how there's a line right here? Over there, it's a little thicker. You see how it's right here, the line actually goes all the way across. Well, it's heat waving, okay? It's heat waving, and you, it's gonna get really dang noticeable probably in the next week or two if we don't get some rain. Like, we're actually using, we're losing yield, unfortunately, by the day already. This looks droughtish already, doesn't it? It's giving us flashbacks, not a good thing. Um, these bottom leaves are burning out. It's pushing out very fast. Trying to, it's trying to survive. Like this is natural. It's trying to set seed before it dies. It's pushing out fast, and it's going to take whatever moisture it can find to have to push it ahead and try and fill it. <sighs> we thought that our drought was over. I'm not saying that we're going back, but uh, my PTSD from the last two devastating years of drought is starting to re-trigger itself. <laughs> And it's not looking awesome. It just isn't. Good morning, guys. It's June 23rd today. And Brian is good enough to fly me up to the North Farm. So he literally just dropped me off here. Oh yeah, that's the same. It's a wide runway. A lot wider than ours back home. Thank you, Brian. And just like that, he's gone. Guys, it's June 23rd. Obviously, Brian just, uh, my younger brother, uh, flew me up to the North Farm. It's about a five and a half hour commute if you want to drive it in truck, and that's that's going pretty dang fast. Uh, probably closer to six if you want to, you know, 
take your time and grab a Tim Hortons along the way. So it's a bit of an undertaking to drive between the two farms, but things are slowing down at the South Farm in terms of spraying because, you know, we're kind of hitting the brakes with the sprayers for the chemical and the fungicides and the insecticides because our crop is starting to burn up and we now have to start calculating out. There's no rain in the forecast, so if it keeps going that way, how much money do we keep putting out to that crop? So unfortunately, that's the reality of our situation and those are the decisions we kind of have to make. So. Brian flew me up to the North Farm because we have finished our crop spraying up here, but I needed to do crop scouting again just in case we have to respray anything or something didn't die. But this is our canola, or some of our canola. Pretty happy with the catch. Uh, this stuff is, uh, this is all in vigor. I only grew in vigor canola this year. And now we're at the wheat. This is hard red spring wheat. So this is the field that um, we had all that trash and, uh, material. Remember we did that video? But this is looking pretty awesome. So this isn't the worst of the material. Well, it's actually over there on the other side of that slough. We'll, we'll wander over there. There was about 40 acres that was really bad. But this looks pretty awesome too. Forgot the lentils. Forgot I had 27 different crops up here. <laughs> oh man, so obviously we got a little Canada thistle. You can't control Canada thistle in lentils. Holy smokers! <sighs> Nearly gave me a heart attack. Must be a nest up here. Where'd he fly out of? Anyway, we'll leave them alone. That did, uh, that did make me jump a little bit. So here's the lentils. They're, they're not very big yet, but uh, they're coming. And of course it's down here where it's getting all the rain, so this will be very interesting to see. We will be getting close to hit these with a fungicide pretty soon. Because the problem is, is these suckers need stress in order to grow. I shouldn't say grow, I'll rephrase that. They need stress in order to pod. That's the crop update. Now I'll let you guys go. Good morning, everybody. It is July 10th today. Sorry about the wind. I do have my mic on, but it's still probably gonna be pretty dang windy. Um, I'm just getting over a cold, so I am talking a little bit more like a duck than normal. <laughs> but uh, this is the South Farm. We have not burnt up, but we are continuing to burn up very quickly and very bad. Uh, we are consistently getting these 30, 35k winds, which are pretty dang typical here in July. And we are getting the heat to go with it. We're, we're rocking 34 degrees yesterday, and you can't go 34 degrees with this kind of wind and not your crop go up in smoke. So this is Durham. A pretty poor crop of Durham. So you can tell where there's little bits of chunks of moisture right down there and that little bit of a slough. There's gonna be a little something down there. You get those little wee patches, basically wherever a deer peed. <laughs> wherever there was moisture, wherever there, a gopher peed or somewhere, you're gonna have a little patch. Another little slough right over there. Side hill, obviously nothing. This is what we got. It's actually pushing head and it's, well, that's probably, realistically, that's probably eight inches. But guys, this is... We are only July 10th. This is our hot month. We have just entered our hot month. And we've also entered the month that we get the least amount of rain typically. May and June are our wet months, which we didn't see anything in June. So as yes, give you an update if you're just queuing in with us now. Uh, we had good sufficient rains, we had good snow uh, this spring during seeding, but whew, it's windy. The rains quit, the wind started, the heat turned on, and the rest is history. Our crops are burning up faster than Trudeau can spend money, and that is really saying something. Look at this, this isn't even going to produce a head. This is going to die. It's basically already dead.
that's gone, you guys. And now we made it over to some Durham. This is some late seeded Durham. This is actually the last field we seeded. You remember the drills were coming up over this hilltop and this Durham is not going to amount to anything. It is 33 degrees out currently and it's quite breezy. And the grasshoppers are cleaning it off. We have sprayed this field once, the whole field, and we've come in and sprayed the ditch, the road allowance and everything around here first round yet again because they keep working their way in. Uh, but this is not going to come back. This is dead. And they pretty much have done that around the whole perimeter. They took a little bit of that hilltop off right there. They're still out here, but they're flying now. The grasshoppers are flying, so they can come in from anywhere. This Durham is, uh, really, it's pretty small. <laughs> but look at this. It's going to shoot out a little head here. Isn't that something? It's only four inches tall. It's going to try to shoot ahead. It's literally just running out of moisture. It hasn't rained out here since we seeded it. Oh, yeah, look at the grasshoppers. They've definitely taken out a long way right here. Yeah, that's grasshopper damage. Well, we'll head back to the truck. But like I say, if we don't get some rain on this, uh, we won't even bring a combine out here. I think there's nothing. Are we in Waterton Chapel? Are we in Waterton? Hmm? Yeah, so pick up those rocks and you throw them in there. You throw them in the water. Oh, good job. Oh, good job. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. You gonna throw it in there? Oh. oh, good job. I like his little. Oh. Oh. Well, careful, 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 Chapel. Look where you throw, look where you throw, and throw where you look. Good job. You having fun? Is this just me or is the water amping up a little bit here? Good job. We might get some rain on us here. Chapel would be entertained all day. He won't stop until all the rocks are here. Until all the rocks are in the water. We're going to be here a little while, you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Chapel, be careful. Is that how you get pebbles? That's how you get pebbles. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Come on. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Good job. Good job. <laughs> There you go. Good job. All right. Runway. Good morning, guys. Hold so, on. There it goes. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Is that Uncle Brian? Mm. Yeah. Here he comes. Mm. Mm. There he goes. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, here's your update here. I, it's the 26th, I think, of July. I just got up to the North Farm. Have to come up here for a few days. Um, this is the, what I call the hazel quarter. This is the one that had all the trash on it. It's the first quarter I bought up here. Uh, this is wheat. It's looking really, really good. Um, it's probably about waist height right now, and there is a few that are trying to shoot up. It's probably still gonna gain a little bit more height. It's very thick. Maybe too thick. It has been a little dry up here as well. There's a few spots out in this field. It's starting to heat wave a little bit, which tells you that it's starting to get a little dry. It's slightly concerning, but um, looks like it's going to be a really nice crop. So I'm pretty stinking excited about it. All right, guys. Here's the update on the lentils, and wow. Do we have a heck of a crop of lentils coming out here, you guys? It's very thick. It's like carpet. It's very thick. I seeded it super thick. I seeded it super thick to try and make it come in. <laughs> there is no signs of this coming in at all. In fact, it's still flowering. Now, don't get me wrong. It is drooping with pods. 
which is awesome. Anyway, super excited about these lentils. Look at this, just like a carpet. <laughs> oh man, I hope they keep coming in. I should probably try checking for disease, but uh, anyway, that's the look of it. They look awesome, but they got a long way to go yet, you guys. They got a long way to go, so we don't have anything near the bank on these lentils. Talk to you later. Good morning, everybody. It is August 12th today, and uh, it's, I don't know, it's the first or second day of harvest. We kind of did a soft start there yesterday. Today is still technically what we call a soft start. Soft start is when we try and get one or two combines up and running, get them set calibrated, get the bugs worked out, and then we get a couple more combines up and running, do a set calibrate, get them, and that's what we're doing. So uh, uh, my younger brother Brian and I, we're the last two combines to uh, get up and running here this morning. So uh, hopefully we can work out any bugs. All right, I think we're gonna give us another go here. These lentils are pretty dang short, I should mention that. They're probably the height of a pop can out there. Literally a pop can. In the good areas, it's definitely a little better. It'd be the height of my thermos. So far, they look like to be feeding good. Uh, gauge wheels are just they're off the ground just slightly about probably two inches higher in the ground I am in flex mode and this is my first pass of the season in this thing so I'm trying to brush the rust off here guys so That's not good. I hope that comes up a little bit. All right, guys. So we just got rained out. Um, we nicely got cutting, and then we got rained out. So I guess it is what it is. So anyway, I'm in the old white Volvo, and uh, I'm pulling the uh, dash trailer here, the chemical trailer. And I'm just about to leave the South Farm. I'm going to stop at home here, grab some supper, ash in a chapel. I'm going to kiss them and hug them. And then I'm probably going to head up to the North Farm tonight. It'll probably take me six or seven hours to get up there. It's always slower in the semi. Uh, should get up there two o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then uh, I need to see if I need to do some spraying. If not, then I have my uh, Duramax truck up there. Uh, it needs to come home and I'll bring it home. And then the trailer will be up there ready to spray for whenever we need to go spraying. So just trying to knock off as much birds or as many birds as possible here. So I guess that's the upside and the downside of having two different farms. When it rains, everyone else is like, it's a weekend. And when it rains, I'm like, well, I'm going to the North Farm to continue working. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is, uh... Donna, what's the day today? Sunday I know it's 13th so we got rained out at home like we literally just got going on lentils and we took a half an inch of rain more rain and yes it's windy out I apologize but uh, so Donovan Donovan and I we uh, headed to the north farm because that's just what we do we got to go up we got to check crops we got it's getting close to desiccation not this wheat that you're gonna look at but our mustard is getting sprayed by the plane our lentils are close to desiccation and uh, there is like another two inches of rain coming to the north farm. Now all the rains are coming. It hasn't rained in either location in a long time and now we're getting our rains and it's kind of an unfortunate time but it is what it is. So we're looking at some wheat and she's starting to go down. You can see it's, uh, it's lodging right there, there. All down and at that draw and it's just kind of it's starting to go down right over there yet so it's gonna be a fun harvest I can tell now we have pre-planned for this we rolled everything land rolled everything but no doubt 
she's starting to go down. Good afternoon, everybody. It is August 16th today. This is the last day of red lentils. We've been chewing on red lentils for a little while here. Uh, these things are running around 10 bushels an acre. This is the instant going through the combine. That's the moisture. This field will probably average a little more than 10 bushel an acre. But as you can tell, it's it's not an awesome looking crop. If you can see between the rows, that's not that's not good. But, like I said, like I said before in the last video, we had like 0.8 or basically a bushel last year of red lentils, uh, or maybe less in some areas. Uh, so this is just about like nine or 10 times better, the red lentil crop, than last year. So how often can you go into a field and be like, this crop was 10 times the crop it was last year? Not very often. So there's a lot to be thankful for, and we're thankful that it is better than last year. Today, this is Ernie 2.0's first load ever for augering mustard, which is a lot easier. We're actually making her work. She's burning the paint off the muffler. You can clearly see. Uh, maybe you can't see. But it is smoking and normal. That's, that's normal for a Birkin. That's perfect. First load in the bin. Woo! Woo! How's it going up there, buddy? It's a little dusty in here. I'm gonna close this door. Good morning everybody, it is uh, August 28th today. We are obviously back up at the North Farm. Ashton's inside the water. Brushing off a little bit of the rush. She didn't do any squatting last year. Uh, but she's gonna do some squatting this year. We're gonna squat three fields to get the uh, combine rolling. And then uh, planes are coming in to spray everything else. And no, it won't be my brother because I gotta be combine a back home. So, uh, we're gonna have to get some stuff, uh, some spray and dust custom. So I just left the cell phone. Reversible fan. So obviously uh, we left this cell farm uh, because I wanted to come up here and test my brown mustard. It is ready to go. So I'm gonna cut that one field of brown mustard. I'm hoping to cut some lentils while I'm up here as well. And Ash is gonna try to do some swapping. It's a pretty nice canola crop. Ash is feeling a little bit of pressure right now because uh, you know we're doing some recording. Oh, oh, we're dragging. Oh, we were dragging. Oh no, she got it. She got it. She got it. So anyways, we did put a swath roller on this one. We did, what the? <laughs> oh, we got a, we got a Pluggles. Uh, you're gonna have to back up. I don't think it's gonna go on. There it goes. There it is. All right, now we're gonna. Let's not, let's pretend that that didn't happen. You guys didn't see that. We're, we are real world around here, you guys. Real world. All right, guys, she kicked me out. She's like, enough of your YouTubing while I'm, <laughs> while I'm trying to work. We will watch her from the road. worried about this edge a little bit. Sometimes I like to try and seed a little bit of the ditch. And right there. A little bit. And I don't know why because you can't get up there with a swath of work on one. And we're back. I know. So I literally just loaded up another three-quarter hopper here to dump in the cart to get the semi going and uh, 
turned on my auger, and it was like, ding, 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 pop. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. It sheared a shear pin on this auger. And it actually ran long enough to shear the shear pin, so it probably filled it up. So, we'll see if we can get it going without uh, shearing another one, if we can get it changed here. Maybe we can uh, open that up, so there's just a little less auger to move. And uh, if you're wondering what the shear pins look like, there they are right there. And then they go in right, hold on, let me zoom in right there where that head goes. So we've sheared one coupler off the south combine and we just sheared our first auger pin. I've never sheared an auger pin actually. That's the first time I've ever sheared an auger pin. Even last year when we had all the rain dump on us, uh, we burnt belts off and we never sheared a pin. So we're gonna change this and uh, we'll try it again. So Mike's gonna idle the combine and unload. Get a visual. Thumbs up. And she went snap again. We've had to disengage the cross auger belt to try and run to stop it shearing the bolt on the unload auger. In my opinion, that is a stupid design. You've got all these shields around it, so you can't take that belt fully off. We're going to watch that bolt. Take the uh, extend off. everybody it's still September 9th here today uh, we're still cracking on uh, Durham up north at uh, North Farm and I wanted to show you uh, this is obviously Ernie 2.0 you've already seen him before and we have a brand spanking new Akron G double T 5010 on this puppy so big thanks to Akron again they uh, they brought us out another bagger this year to use starts going downhill we have to keep applying a little bit more brake pressure to keep the bag perfect 
Otherwise, we're gonna get Humpty Bumpty Bumpties in our bag, which isn't the end of the world. But if your grain was tough and you have air pockets in it, then it can mold, like chickpeas will mold in the air pocket. This stuff's dry, so I'm not too worried about it, but it must about be empty. Good afternoon, it is September 17th, and um, well, we are trying to combine lentils. Um, if you haven't checked out Ron's video with Heart Tongue Family Farms, I think I said that right, I had to yell at him at the combine because I couldn't, I have a terrible memory, I can't remember nothing. If it's not wrote down, it's gone forever. So anyways, he came up again, he, uh, I think this is his third year in a row. And the last time him and I were cutting lentils was with the ideal combine and we couldn't get it out the back end of the combine so we had to windrow it, drop the straw, and we're doing the exact same thing with these X9s. We cannot get the straw out the back end of these X9s. They just plug right up. Now, the S series over there, it's a 780. Um, we have no problem with it. We could cut the whole field and spread it, but we have a 745 FD draper head, which is not a hinge, unlike these. These are 50 foot hinge headers for both Xs. But that 45 foot rigid table, even though it has a flexible cutter bar, it needs to have a hinge, will not cut these lentils on rolly ground. So yes, we have a combine that will cut them and go through the green and go through the weeds with no problem, but we can't, we leave a lot of lentils out in the field. And we're going. Just trying to fine tune this header a little bit. sample here. A few cracks. So this is the green straw that we're having trouble with. The lentils are dry, but the straw is still a little green. And this is what we cannot get through the back end of the next nine. Okay, I unplugged three times, three times in one pass. And uh, I was having uh, ideal combine flashbacks. Ron, as you know, uh, spends a lot of time in X9 combines as part of his job. So, uh, He's quite familiar with them, which is great. Because I bounce a lot of stuff off Ron. I'm like, Ron, how do I do this? Ron, can I do this? Ron, what about this? Ron, 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 Ron. Okay, so now he's going back, round two. All right, so we're uh, unplugging the back end of the combine here again, and we were wind rowing. It's plugged all the way up to the front. Plug solid.
What a freaking gong show. Good morning, everybody. It's September 18th. We're still plugging away on Lennels. Um, as you know, last night you can actually plug the back end of the X9 while wind rowing. But well, we got the 780 out here. These are my wind rows this morning. A lot bigger this morning, a little tougher. And uh, let's just walk over the 780 over here. There you go. That's better. been digging already this morning Donovan hasn't been he's been fighting with his header a lot though like this Let's go back over here and I gotta do a little more uh, digging on the X9. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ah, look. It quit a long way back there, guys. Way back there. Dang, there's a lot in there. Oh, dang. Oh. Oh. Sick of unplugging combines. Ah, uh, so. Oh man. I don't understand. I just don't understand. The S series, he's full over there. He's waiting on a truck. We're waiting on a truck to get back to us. I don't understand. Hasn't skipped a beat. Hasn't skipped a beat. I can't stop plugging. He hasn't skipped a beat. You want to see? All right, here we go. I've already, I've already plugged. This was my last pass, my very last pass. I just came back this way. Look at this. This is pretty stinking dry, guys. Here's him. No problem. He's not doing a very good job spreading it because of that, you know, or technology that we got on that particular combine. And then he skipped the pass. Who this? If you can't get this through, that's problematic. And then, yeah, he's having header problems trying to follow these hills. I'm just trying to stay combining. Brutal. All right, guys, it's still September 18th. We have finished the lentils. Praise the good Lord, we finished the lentils. That was a long drag, holy cow. 
three combines, two days to do one quarter of lentils. Wow. Let's just not do that again this year. <laughs> um, we're cracking on wheat. You can't tell because my window's so dirty, but that cart is full. Um, we're very happy with our wheat yield this year. That last field that was doing about uh, 100, it was doing 100 in that uh, 40 acres where all that organic matter was. It did not average that. I think it only averaged about 89 or so because it tapered off once it got to the other part of the field. But we're super stoked with all of our wheat yields. Um, yeah, I'm just happy to be back on wheat. Wow, am I son. <laughs> I am happy to be back on wheat. So, a little update, I guess. All of our canola swabs that we swabbed, we only swabbed three fields, uh, they have been picked up. We tried to go and straight cut the standing stuff. We have a lot of standing stuff. It is not ready, okay? It's not fully cured. So, uh, we have about a week, a good week of wheat to do. Well, given weather and conditions, I guess. So, we'll finish the wheat and then we'll do the standing canola last. Ashton is on the other X9, she's in the field, and Chapel is co-piloting. Good evening everybody, it is September 27th today. Um, we are on our very last field of canola up at the North Farm. Actually last full field to combine, period. We have the moon up there, uh, Lee is in the other X9 over there, and uh, Will is in the grain cart over there, and we have some neighbors uh, a yonder way over there. So, we are super stoked to be done. Well, we're not done. We got about 100 acres, but man, we can, we're so close to being done, we can freaking smell it. Speaking of what I can smell, I can smell the moisture, the dew setting in. Oh, this crop of canola, actually the whole crop in general at the North Farm, we'll update on that. Um, unbelievable crops up here. Last year we had record crops. Well, to me it's a record crop because I've only been up here for a couple years. But we had record crops last year. And uh, our crops this year surpassed last year's crop. The, uh, it's getting really annoying. It just hangs in there. And then all of a sudden it wants to go and ouch. Ouch, that hurt. Another one. Ouch. Ouch. What's going on over there? There it comes, here it comes. They just create for such uneven feeding. Unbelievable. Suck my reel. So my reel is all the way in right now. Pretty much you just gotta stick it down and mash this stuff. And it will kind of reduce it. If it doesn't go up against the pea auger and wrap that pea auger, which is the second most common thing it will do. Come on, come on. That's gonna wrap my pea auger, it's gonna wrap it. Oh no, here it comes though. Oh, we stopped in time. No, there's another one. Maybe it didn't probably pop off. Okay, I got it. All right, guys. Whew. Just climbed to the top of the bins. We're done. We are officially done harvest. So, after 63 days, 1,203 hours of consistent days. It's been a very long grind, but we're done. We're done. Thank you guys so much for following us around. We got a lot of fun fall work that we're gonna do. And uh, feels good, I'm not gonna lie. Good morning, everybody. It is October 9th today, which is Canadian Thanksgiving. So, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. 
I just got back to the North Farm, and sorry it's windy. I lost Hammy. I don't know where I put the put the little guy. He's probably in a truck or a tractor or a combine or a sprayer or something of somewhere, and I can't find him. Hammy is my mic, so prepare yourself for a little bit of wind here this morning. So we rented a Volvo. Um, Traco. I call him Traco. That's just what I grew up calling him. Uh, also a high hope. Uh, excavator, whatever you want to call him, whatever your word of choice is. So we rented a 22 ton. Do I have Traco experience? Absolutely not. Are we going to learn together like always? Absolutely. That is how we roll. We've got to do a little bit of work up here and we're actually out in Ashton's field here right now. This is the field that she bought. I guess it'd be a couple years ago now. And remember that video that we did when we were out here rock picking and spray painting deadheads? We were hunting deadheads. Something deadheads, anyway, um, is the title of that video. I think it was hunting deadheads. And I spray painted them red. Well, I'm back out here this time, a couple years later, and we're gonna dig them out. Ah, uh, we found it. We found a big one. And, uh, I'm trying to do everything all one time here. Come on, I'm trying to pull it up, pull it up. Come on, there it comes, there it comes, there it comes. Okay, so we got, uh, can you say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Yeah. Mm. So uh, we got the boss with us. And uh, hold on, Ashton's trying to call me. And I've been kind of playing around here with a little bit with him. He just loves it. All right, we're gonna swing around. Okay, here we go. Hold on the dad. Beep. We're going over to mom. Mom's over there. She's hunting rocks for us. Oh, hold on, we gotta rev this thing up a little bit, okay? Hold on to that. Ramming speed. What do you think? He's like, I don't know, guys. Just loving it. Get to spend time with the family. How about one more try, Chapel? How about one more try? This? Ready? We're gonna, we're gonna swing while we're running. Hold on. Hold the dead. Right, guys it's still October 14th we just dug this tractor and uh, this carol out and now we're gonna do a video of some heroin
Anyway, conditions are damp, they're wet. It's not awesome heroin conditions, but uh, we like seeing what this thing will do in not perfect conditions. So those discs These discs are independent, so you can lift them up out of the way if you don't want to use them and just want to use the herald. Oh, maybe we better not go through the cattails. We'll go around the cattails. And if I wasn't supposed to say, I'm pretty sure that's what they have on their auto, other models as well. What do we got up here? Sunglasses, keys. <laughs> I guess we'll get turned around. But we're back again. I know, I know. We're back. We're like a bad cold. You just can't shake us. So this field, this field. I'm just gonna step out here. This is the lentil field, or one of them that we had all the plugging problems. We actually wind rode this whole field. You can see a little bit of wind row right there, and uh, we used that disc harrow, and we went over it three times, all different directions. And we did not bail the wind rows, we just harrowed the wind rows. And I'm pretty happy. So anyways, this whole field was completely windrowed. And uh, now look at it. Also the low spots that were all matted down that uh, you know we had to combine it going west. This is west. This looks freaking awesome. Expose some of the rocks. I guess this is the time to go rock picking. So yeah, there you go. Now you know what we did with our windrows. Bye-bye, 724.